What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a whole bunch of bad news to share with you. Uh, just the uh, the state of the nation, the state of the country. Uh, you can look around at a lot of these major Democrat-controlled cities and you can see uh, the future that the globalists are trying to openly trying to push down our throats. And obviously, many of us don't want that sort of stuff, but it's happening one way or the other and you should be prepared for it. And Whenever I read through these headlines, there should be no doubt left in your mind of why you need to get out of a city. If you're in a city right now, if you're still living in a city, I mean, you're just asking for it. This stuff is eventually going to come around to you. I know you think when you read these headlines and you read these stories, well, that's someone else, but eventually it will affect your family if it hasn't already. Uh, you know, I remember, I was just thinking back, I was like, when did this whole thing start where we got away from law and order and justice, you know, for all and equal protection under the law and stuff like that? And it actually goes back before Biden came in. Uh, you know, honestly, you could look back to Obama, you could look back to uh, Bill Clinton to some degree, a lesser degree. Obama did the most damage, in my opinion. And of course, as many of us know, uh, this is Obama's third term basically his his third go around he he's even said as much about if i could run uh the united states uh presidency from my basement and have someone else be the front man i would do that and that's exactly what's going on i mean you can't make this stuff up but so uh a little more contemporary stuff that that comes to mind is the the COVID restrictions, the COVID lockdown. And let's back up a little bit when the Chinese released a bioweapon on the world, right? And mainly it was targeted at the Trump administration. And we know all this stuff now. We figured out that this came out of Wuhan, but all the disinformation that was covered up by people like Anthony Fauci and the NIH and all these organizations that it wasn't just the Chinese that did this. It was our own government, man, that, that helped them to have the ability to do this uh, lab leak, as they call it, you know, uh, wink, wink, nud, nod, nod, nudge, nudge. It's all BS. We all know it's all, you know, people that are paying attention know that it's BS. The majority of us, I think, know that it's BS. And we've been fed, spoon fed, a line of BS from the start. And especially it started getting worse and worse and worse around uh, 2019, the end of 2019, 2020 was horrible. We had the, you know, the summer of violence. What did, what did they call it? Uh, summer of love. And it was actually looting, raping, violence, pillaging. I mean, anything you could imagine going on in these major cities. And yet several people, I mean, even people I know stayed in the cities after that. And I'm just like, are you out of your mind? If, <laughs> if there was a neon sign that said, leave the city now, or you're going to be killed or murdered. I mean, would that be enough for these people? I don't know, but there are some people, and I get it. You grew up there. Maybe a lot of your family's there. You don't want to flee. You want to try to hold that ground, whatever. Uh, you're looking at things a lot differently than I am because I believe this stuff is lost. Our, our major cities, especially the ones uh, that are controlled and have been controlled for the last 30 or 40 years by Democrats, are so underwater, so upside down in the Justice Department that... Uh, there is no justice. It's basically the Wild West, except worse, because it's the modern version of the Wild West. I mean, we've got people going and doing these flash mob. They uh, coordinate and organize these things using modern technology like Twitter and you know Facebook and things like that. So uh, anyway, to get into this stuff, these headlines, I'm going to need my anti-communist glasses because this is communism. It's part of the... 45 communist goals for America. See, they wanted to overthrow us way back in the 1940s and 50s, and they wrote a little plan with 45 communist goals. I, I made a whole video about it. You should go check it out. Uh, but this is communism. They want to come in, uh, disrupt everything that's good about the United States system, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, our equal protection under the law, everything, right? Our right to a speedy trial. I mean, look at all these J6ers that are still down there that haven't had a trial yet after three years. I mean, that is not a speedy trial. So they're, they're clearly violating our rights on a daily basis. And something has changed at some point because used to be we were a nation of laws, right? So let's look through some of the, these examples that I pulled out over the past week or two here that are just mind blowing. And if you could go back, if I could go back in time and read any any one of these headlines to myself, I'd be like, 
In what country? Are we talking about a third world country? No, we're talking about cities in the United States of America. First headline, mass looting spreads to Democrat-run Philadelphia. And they've had days and days and days of this stuff. Uh, it's first started, I don't know, about a week ago, I guess, when I heard the first one. They were, they're looting these places, and these, these big, uh, you know, these woke companies are becoming victims. That's one of the most uh, funny things out of all this stuff. Some of the most woke companies are finally getting the message that, hey, uh, we can't have these Target stores here. We're going to have to close down a whole bunch of these Target stores because... The looters are putting us out of business. These people just stealing on a daily basis. And you, you, you've seen it. People have had to, uh, you know, I remember, uh, I don't know, somewhere in California, they had to encase all of the merchandise behind glass cases with keys and locks so that, you know, the manager actually comes over and gets it for you. That way you won't steal it. You know, I mean, just ridiculous. So mass looting is going on in Philadelphia. It'll probably go on in other cities. All, and it probably does go on. It's just underreported. So moving on. Sheriff sounds alarm on gangs of illegal aliens getting into the U.S. through border uh, to burglarize Americans. So these people, they found these people. This guy was out of Minnesota. So not just right on the border, right? I mean, way up there. These people, uh, you know, probably MS-13 and other uh, Mexican gangs are coming up through the, southern, the, the open border that Biden has kicked wide open and said, come one, come all, bring all your sick, your tired, your diseases, everything you've got, your poorest, your worst, your, your most rapiest people you have, bring them, send them first, we're gonna let them into our city. So they did. Now this sheriff is sounding the alarm saying, hey man, uh, they're coming here to burglarize Americans, okay? And so they're not gonna be robbing people that look like they don't have anything. They're gonna be robbing people like you and me that look like we might have some stuff in our shop and stuff like that. So what I'm telling you is you better be on high alert because this shit is coming to your town, even your small town, even your suburbs outside of a city. It's coming if it's not already there. Let us know down in the comments, have you noticed an increase in theft and, and you know petty crimes and stuff like that uh, since 2019 or maybe more specifically since Biden took power? Uh, you know, it ain't just Biden. So it's not just him. It's he's one of the multi uh, heads of this Hydra. OK, it's also George Soros appointing these DAs all around the nation that are soft on crime, on certain kinds of crime. Although if you're a MAGA Republican and pro Trump, they're going to crack down on you and they're going to call you a domestic terrorist. Don't kid yourself. That's exactly what the plan is. Next headline here. Uh, I don't know how to say this person's name. Kular? Kular? Uh, we're not deporting anywhere near enough people, so they're going to keep coming. So that's what the deal is, man. I hear all these people always arguing about, hey, do we need a wall? Is a wall going to stop things? I really don't. I mean, I think in some places walls make sense and other places they don't make sense. What we need is to turn off the magnet. There has been a magnet turned on years ago. It's called free stuff, okay? If you can come over to the United States and get free stuff, I mean, hell... I don't, I don't have the headline here, but I heard that they were putting these uh, illegals up in like, you know, three and four star motels only. They were like, no, you can't put them in a Motel 6. You have to put them in the, you know, top of the line, uh, you know, suite at the Hilton or whatever. And I'm just like, what the hell is this crap? It's our money being used uh, by globalists to basically get rid of our wealth. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to spend us into oblivion to the point where we won't be able to recover. That's the whole objective of this thing. This plan is to get us hooked on a one world currency, probably called something like a CBDC or something like that. There won't be an actual greenback or a dollar or a piece of you know tangible item that you can hold. Uh, although you may have to have an implant or a chip or something like that, you know, put in your head or on your forearm or your hand, or your wrist, whatever. Mark of the beast sounds like to me. But anyway, moving on, let's see what these illegals have been up to. You know, these wonderful people, these asylum seekers that only want to come here for a better life. Well, house of horrors, 11 illegal aliens among men accused of gang raping girls in a small Minnesota town. So there you go again. Apparently, Minnesota is having a hell of a time with the illegals coming there. And they found this house. Like, you know, I don't know if somebody, one of these illegals actually owned or was paying rent on this house or what. But they found 11 illegal aliens, among other men, at this house 
this rape house where they gang raped an 11 year old girl and a 16 year old girl and a third girl that they didn't say the the age of so three girls in this town in minnesota had their whole lives basically altered to the point that you could say it probably ruined their lives uh luckily none of them were murdered at least that these people reported in this article, but this is what a lot of these people are doing. Does that mean every illegal alien that comes over has bad intentions like this? No, but you have to, that's what the whole border is about. That's what the whole process of legal immigration is about. And I support that 100%. I think we need to do things to make that process, the legal, uh, you know, immigration process needs to be, um, you know, sped up it needs to be made to where people that are good people can get in here easier and they shouldn't have to wait two or three years and stuff like that there is definitely some stuff we need to do but we want to weed out these rapists and these murderers and these gang members i mean a lot of them uh i don't remember if this was the same one i think it was the guy had tattoos all over his face and one of the tattoos was like a a guy holding a gun right on his throat and i'm just like oh my god I mean, so that's how the 11 year old girl was able to get to the police somehow and identify uh, these these rapists. And I mean, I have a daughter. I have, you know, lots of sister in laws and stuff like that. You know, lots of females in my family. And I'm I'm worried because I'm seeing this over and over and over. Now, I don't live in Minnesota, but it's happening in my state, in my towns, too. It's happening in yours as well. Pay attention to it. Be on the alert for it. Uh, you know, honestly, if you're in a state that allows it, you should always be carrying a gun. Always. And if you don't live in a state that allows it, you should probably get your ass to a state where you have rights to defend yourself. Against people like this, monsters, that will lock an 11 and a 16-year-old girl in a closet, unconscious, and rape them. <sighs> Unbelievable. Video. Operation Buyer's Remorse. 160 arrests made during Ohio human trafficking crackdown. So they arrested 160 people. They didn't say if they were illegals or how many of them were illegals, but I'm sure probably the vast majority of them were. But, you know, that doesn't, ex that doesn't exempt the people that are American citizens that are also taking part in this activity. I mean, I think people that are dealing with human traffic trafficking are the worst kinds of monsters, and they ought to be dealt with uh, swiftly and justly and uh, capital punishment. Next up, Biden regime decides to build border wall segment two months after they sold all the Trump border parts worth $300 million for $2 million. So there, there goes your wealth, right? This border wall stuff that we had set up that the Biden regime has said, oh no, that's bad. Border walls don't work. We should never put them up. Well, now he's getting pressured by these Democrat states. See, these Democrat cities that are being overrun. And so he has to do something. And he's got an election coming up, perhaps. Uh, of course, a lot of people are talking about Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom coming in at the last minute. And now I think they only have about another month to decide on that. And then it's locked in with Biden. So we'll see what happens. But they sold 300 million U.S. taxpayer dollars, money that they would come to your house and take from you if you didn't pay them every red cent. They gave this stuff away for $2 million. That's not a, that's not a sound investment. Steel and everything else has gone up since that stuff was ordered under Trump. So theoretically, it should be worth more than $300 million. But that's the way our government works. They buy it at gold prices and sell it you know, for lead unbelievable and and the united states people keep putting up with this crap and wondering what the hell's wrong and why we don't why why our roads are so jacked up and screwed up and our bridges are falling down it's because of crap like this <sighs> gop rips the biden administration hypocrisy over sudden need for border wall so walls do work is the question <laughs> Yeah, Biden will never admit that. In fact, I heard him in an interview saying, oh, well, no, I don't believe they work, but we have to do it because we're locked in. We have to do it. I don't want to do it. We have to do it. Bullshit. It's all a facade. It's all a show with these people. Moving on. New Jersey man accused of sexual assault by six women uh, gets a plea deal with no additional jail time. So there's one of those George Soros-appointed prosecutors right there slapping a person on the wrist saying, no jail time for you, even though six women accused this guy. I mean, that's a big deal. Philly DA to judges. We need to take it easy fund on fundamentally law-abiding looters. What is a fundamentally 
law-abiding looter? You let me know down in the comments if you have an answer for this, because I certainly don't know what that means. It sounds like someone who's making up words. and try, I mean, there is no such thing as a fundamentally law-abiding looter, okay? Unbelievable. But that's what these Soros-appointed DAs, like the one in Philly, are doing. Go look it up. Look at all the money that George Soros has put into all these DAs and probably even in your state. You'll be lucky if uh, the person that you wanted to run and wanted to be elected was the one that got it instead of some of these Soros people that are shipped in from all over the world who are trained and they don't even have to be told what to do. They already have the marching orders in the Communist Manifesto inside of their mind. That's why all this stuff is happening in a simultaneous coordinated effort and it doesn't look like it's coordinated it's because these people already have the indoctrination pounded into their mind through the public education system and then you know four six eight years of college indoctrination so there you go that's why it's happening they have taught generations of children that america is bad and needs to be stopped and needs to be broken break it down to its smallest parts never let a crisis go to waste that's what they think that's what they believe and it's working Controversial. Zero bail policy goes into effect for Los Angeles County. So now they're going to have zero bail because they said bail is racist. And it's, uh, you know, it's selective towards people that have lots of money and stuff like that. So they're saying, oh, we got to even the playing field and no bail. And what that means is they're going to slap them on the wrist, all of them, even violent offenders, and they're going to let them back out. That's what they're doing right now. Video shows man in a dress wielding a hammer allegedly, allegedly used in two Seattle attacks. So there, there was this guy on a bus or a train or something like that, and he's just in a dress, you know, uh, wielding a hammer. He was a black guy. He was wielding a hammer, you know, and uh, I guess that's the norm now. I guess we're supposed to accept that. We're supposed to be like, oh, well, you know, that guy had a really bad life growing up in Seattle, and we have to accept all of his insanity. No, no, we don't. We have to stand up against it and always go strapped. Always be ready to defend yourself because if somebody comes at you wielding a hammer, that's a deadly weapon. And you have the right, at least in my state, uh, to stand your ground and smoke that fool like it ain't no thing because your life is on the line. Your life is more valuable than that crazy ass bastard that's trying to kill you. But that's the way I think. Horror video shows social justice activists stabbed to death in Democrat-run New York. So I hope you guys have seen the video. I can't play it here, or YouTube will probably, you know, strike me down, demonetize me, ban my channel, all the things they do, all the tools in their toolbox they'd throw after me for trying to show you guys the news. So I encourage you to go out and type in that headline, and you'll find this video. And it's horrific. I'll explain it to you. A uh, uh, young man, I think 26, 27-year-old man, and this girl, uh, social justice warrior guy, uh, he's, they were leaving a wedding or something, and they were waiting on a bus. So, so that's something I never do. I never go and wait on a bus because I have my own car. I have my own vehicle. And I get it. In New York City, you probably can't afford to have your own vehicle and a place to live because it's just it's ridiculous with the parking and all that stuff, right? It's almost as if there's too many people in that small of an area, right? Which is what I think and why I would never go there. Uh, anyway, this uh, social justice activist and his girlfriend or his whatever, whatever they would call it, you know, I don't know what this girl's relation, I, they were on a date apparently to a wedding and they're both dressed nice for a wedding. Uh, they're sitting there on a bench and all of a sudden this guy comes walking by he doesn't say anything to him. He's a black guy. And he goes on down a little further and starts smashing these scooters that were like sitting on the side of the road. I don't know if it's a rental deal or what, uh, but he starts smashing these people's scooters and stuff. And for whatever reason, instead of just sitting on the bench and ignoring it, they got up and started looking at it like, uh, what's going on down here? And I, I get it. That's curiosity. But as soon as they did that, that guy turned and was like, hey, what are you looking at? Quit looking at me. What are you looking at? And he walks over to this social justice warrior, 26-year-old man, who was bigger than the attacker. The guy pulls out a knife and stabs him repeatedly, like, I don't know, four or five times with a knife. Probably a butcher knife, right, that he stole from some other place. Uh, I don't know. 
but that's how it goes. Meanwhile, the guy's girlfriend standing there going, hey, what are you doing? Oh, hey, let's talk about it. And the guy, the social justice warrior is trying to talk about it. Like, oh, hey, I don't want no problems. He's trying to reason with an insane person. Okay. You can't do that. They're insane. They're unreasonable. They're going to, if they're coming at you with a knife, they're going to stab you. See, if the guy hadn't have been in a Democrat, socialist, communist controlled New York City, he could have pulled out his sidearm and taken care of that business. But see, uh, that ain't how it went. He ended up getting killed over the deal. He got stabbed to death and his girlfriend or whatever this girl was watched, right? And she, she couldn't do nothing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she didn't have a gun either. Neither one of them had any personal protection of any kind. So they got stabbed, or he got stabbed, damn near. The guy would look like he was going to go after the girlfriend for a minute, but then he turned and went, went away. Well, there's an update. The 18-year-old suspect in fatal stabbing of leftist activist Ryan Carson cries as he faces murder charges. So now he cries. He was probably drugged out, you know, probably on fentanyl or, you know, one of these other uh, street drugs, heroin or trank or one of these things. He was probably whacked out of his mind on goofballs and trying to do this stuff, thinks he can get away with anything, you know, because law doesn't apply to certain people. And that's what this guy is counting on, this 18-year-old suspect as he's crying. They'll probably take pity on him. They'll probably say, well, he's a victim of circumstances. He has no personal accountability. You know, I mean, he's, he's crazy. We can't convict him, you know, send him to a mental institution for two years and let him out. It's happened over and over and over. Brooklyn activist Ryan Thorson Carson would feel sorry for a violent teenager who stabbed him to death and think of him as a victim of a broken system, say friends. So his friends, the friends of this guy Carson, the social justice warrior, are saying that they would have, he would have felt sorry for this guy even after he murdered. Him. Well, it's it's hard for hard to say how Carson would have felt because he can't talk anymore. Okay, so your social justice warrior communist friends are going to turn on you after you get your ass stabbed, right? They're going to turn on you and say, oh no. He wouldn't have liked this system cracking down on this poor 18 year old boy, black guy that probably grew up in a terrible condition. That doesn't excuse you from accountability. We have a nation of laws. We were supposed to. So that guy, Ryan was stabbed to death uh, on Monday at 4 AM. Police at that time were still hunting for the youngster who attacked him while he was waiting on the bus. Carson was a far left activist who would feel sorry for his killer, his friends say. Un-freaking believable. Next headline. New York City liberal activist foolishly tried reasoning with Cray's knife-wielding attacker right before he was murdered. <laughs> uh, these people are so dumb. It's unbelievable that they have as much power that they do have. Of course, we all know it's contrived, okay? Operation Mockingbird, for example. The CIA and other groups, globalist, uh, you know, uh, funded groups with globalist agendas have been controlling our mainstream media for decades and decades and decades, at least a half a century. It's unbelievable. And we put up with it. You know why we put up with it? Because people keep tuning into that crap. If everyone turned it off and didn't watch ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, Yahoo News, on and on and on. The list goes on. If people would stop watching the garbage, they would disappear and go away. But they don't. They never go away. A man is charged with murdering Jen Angel. Her friends are still... Her friends, though, are still pushing for restorative justice. <laughs> the Oakland Baker, Baker's closest friends say she would want accountability and healing that doesn't involve prison. So this woman was murdered, Jen Angel. I guess she was a baker. And uh, her friends are standing there in the background saying, oh, no, she wouldn't want this person to go to prison. Just reform him. Make him see that he did wrong, right? I mean... These people are just unbelievably dumb. Last headline here. New York woman sobs in court as a judge tacks on extra jail time for inability to take responsibility in fatal shove of an elderly woman. She will only serve 8.5 years. So 
the reason I brought this one up and included this in the headlines here is because I wanted to point out the double standard of the justice system. Here's this woman, okay? I'll paint the picture, but roughly what happened. She goes to some sort of gathering. She was getting pretty drunk. She was getting rowdy. The people at the gathering that were running the event said, hey, can you leave? We would like you to leave. And I don't know if they were escorting her out or what, but on the way out, there was like an 87, I believe 87 year old woman who was part of the event in some way. She was, but she wasn't the one asking them to leave. She had nothing to do with kicking them out of there. Uh, so it was this woman, uh, and I didn't write her name down. Uh, she had a Potenza, Pazenza, or something like that was the woman who was the attacker. As she was being driven out or, or escorted out of the gathering, she shoves an 87-year-old woman. The 87-year-old woman must have hit her head or did something that she died four, late, four days later or some, three or four days later in the hospital, okay? Uh, where I come from, that's murder. Maybe it's not... Maybe it's not full murder. Maybe it's manslaughter or something like that. And they did get her, but it was like they they lessened her charges enough to where she didn't get the maximum time. She got eight and a half years. Meanwhile, I uh, can't recall the guy's name, but the leader of the Proud Boys, uh, Iglesias or something like that, that guy got 22 years in prison for allegedly coordinating the J6 attacks or whatever, although... He claims he had nothing to do with it. He wasn't even on the grounds that day. He wasn't even at January 6th, and they gave him 22 years in prison. The double standard in, in the justice system is apparent, okay? They're allowing certain people and certain groups of people to get away literally with murder. And anybody else that even wants to vote for somebody that's not a socialist, communist, Democrat is being put on a watch list. Uh, domestic potential domestic terrorist watch list that's how I know we have a broken system and honestly guys if it doesn't change really really soon and if we don't get the adults back in charge really really soon this grand experiment in individual liberty and freedom will have run its course it will be over so uh, while you can Pay attention to what's going on in your local communities because that's where we have the most control. Try to go out and make sure you're getting the you know, conservative, patriot-minded sheriffs put into power in your counties and your, your, your areas around you. Support those kinds of people, right? Uh, because the alternative are all these horrific headlines I just went through. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I stand for liberty to the bitter end. I hope you do too.